What will you do when your money works for you? Welcome to the Tech Girl Financial Podcast with your hosts, Victor and Kim Gaxiola. From the home office in California, here is Victor and Kim. Hello again, it's Victor and Kim, Tech Girl Financial Podcast. We're so glad you joined us today for another special segment where today we're actually going to talk about the eight timeless principles of investing. Ah, uh, my favorite, the oh, investment yeah. part. Oh, people love investments, hashtag investments. It seems to be Do they really though? They love it. No, I they don't love it. think so. Okay, maybe you love it. I think when they tell me they love it, it's really because they don't want to hurt my feelings. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I never want to hurt your feelings either. So I know I, I, can, I can certainly relate to that feeling. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk through the eight different timeless principles of investing. Again, This is based on a white paper that is currently available on our website. We will also include a download link on the show notes. So if you want to follow along or after today's podcast, you'd like to get your own copy, just click the link on the show notes. Uh, It'll take you to a place where you can download the white paper and then have it in handy. And then what you can do is based on the podcast and the white paper, you can impress all your friends and all your family about how smart you are when it comes to investing. Sound That's like a right. plan? That right? sounds right. All okay, right, so let's Kim, get started. I'm going to kick it off, okay? I'm going to tell you one by one. I'm going to read it, and then I want you to provide your color commentary because you are the, well, you're the expert in all this, and you've got many, many years of experience. So collectively, we'll help out. So number one, very important, focus on what you can control. So as you know, market movements are always moving around, there's interest rates, there's a bunch of stuff, you turn on CNBC and they're just blasting you with headlines, but focus on what you can control. What does that mean to you, Kim? I don't know, I have a a love-hate relationship with control. (laughs) (laughs) But um, what can we control? We control our behavior and our actions. Mm -hmm. We can control um, our discipline and maybe putting money into the market. That's right. um, And increasing it. We can control um, our patients, can we? Kind of, yeah, I think we can. We can definitely control our attitude. Mm -hmm. as you said. And so our recommendation is really you build on an investment strategy that's going to reflect your goals, right? And the things that you're looking to accomplish, but very importantly, one that's within your, uh, let's just say tolerance for risk. So you're not worried when you see those headlines because you know exactly what you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, that, that's really important is control your behavior. It's very natural to get, um, worried, scared, anxious, all of those are natural tendencies and even greed and excitement from Mm -hmm. time to time. Have those feelings, just don't act upon them. Right. Good point. So that's number one, focus on what you can control. Moving right along, we're going to number two. This is one of my favorites. This is something that we tell especially young investors, people are getting started. We tell our kids this and they haven't even really started investing, but there are, they're going to. Number two, put time on your side. Yeah, so the younger the better, or the time that you have in the market, the longest is the best, mm-hmm. uh, really. And so um, sit and let it bake. We've been saying a lot to our clients lately. And, um, you know, it's very hard to see any 10 year period where you don't have a positive performance. Many of the investments that we make, and you should say many of the investment strategies will give people a variety of exposure to multiple asset classes. Some come in favor, some come out of favor. But if you elongate that investment period, it goes beyond 10 years, it goes 20 years, it goes 30 years, it goes 40 years, you can weather bad markets. As a matter of fact, If you're savvy enough, you can take advantage of bad markets. And so put time on your side. So what we say is when people start working at a new job and they give you the option, they say, hey, put your money in the 401k. We'll match it up to a certain percentage or stuff. Start small, start small, but get started. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's something that's really, really important. And also, um, I don't know if this comes next, but time in the market means you have permission to be able to take on more risk. Mm-hmm. 
that's absolutely true. All right, number three. Uh, we alluded a little bit to it on the focus on what you control, but this is really important, especially in our new cycle, which is 24-7, 365, and 366 on New Year, and that is number three, tune out the noise. <laughs> this one's really hard. I know. <laughs> I know. Even I was getting uh, caught up in the news. You know, I I like to watch it in the morning. I finally turned off the TV and Mm -hmm. just get my news in, you know, black and white and red all over (laughs) (laughs) Um, because they don't have attitude. Mm hmm. Well, and the other thing, too, which we've all kind of come to terms with, and I almost think it's like sad that we accept it. But news cycles are built on FUD, Mm -hmm. fear, uncertainty and doubt. Yes. Right? And, and you, just because they're interesting doesn't mean they're relevant. Mm-hmm. So we live in this era of almost infinite data, information coming from multiple places, online, TV, radio, whatever, podcasts. And it can really make you kind of anxious and provide anxiety. So turn it off. Turn it off. And focus on what's important, your goals. Okay, we're moving right along. We're almost we're halfway there, Kim. Number four. Don't try to time markets. Just buy low, sell high. (laughs) Is that part of this? Well, I think, yeah, well, it's part of it, but it kind of goes back to this put time on your side. It's Uh very similar to number two, which people think that they can beat the market, that they're smart enough to know exactly when to buy something because it's going to take off, right? And they know exactly Mm -hmm. when to sell things because they don't see, you know, they think things aren't going to be so good. That is so hard to do. It is really hard to do. And um, typically when everyone says it's the worst time to get in the market, tends to sometimes be the best because the sell-off has happened. Mm -hmm. Um, And so if we are to, one, do what we did in the last number, which was listen to too much TV, get that fear and uncertainty, and then think we know when to buy and sell, um, we, we chances are we'll time this out of, out of, out of whack. Mm -hmm. So the prescription here, as far as three ways that you may consider managing money is, you know, determine that time horizon. Right. So knowing exactly what kind of realistic expectations you might have for a certain time period, be patient, but not reactive, Mm -hmm. you know, so, you know, take, you know, just wait out. It'll be all right. And then number three, which we've already talked about is start early. Right. Start, start early. early. Start early. So those are uh, number four. Don't time, try to time the market. As they say a lot in our business, it's not time timing the market. It's time in the market. And if you think that's just a bunch of hoo-ha, Wall Street hoo-ha, babble, mumbo jumbo, I will tell you, I've <laughs> seen statistics where yeah. somebody thinks they're investing um, in a market high. And then the next day, the greatest statistic is the one, um, that happened, I think on black Thursday. If you, if you in the Mm eighties, if you, um, there's one investment that was the day before the market dropped 20% and another one that invested on the day that the market dropped 20%. And after 20 years, the returns were just hardly noticeable Mm. any different. Mm Mm-hmm. That's interesting. Hmm. See, you get these little bits and nuggets of just magic from yeah. Kim just by listening to the podcast. Oh, lucky you. All right. So we're halfway there. Now we really are halfway there. We've got four more. So hang on, hang in there because these things are all really important. So number five, understand all forms of risk. Okay. So we all might be familiar with market risk, which is the ups and downs of the market. But there's so many other types of forms of risk. Things like political risk, things like inflation risk, inflation risk, things like risk, risk, interest rate, risk, (laughs) interest rate, risk. So there are all kinds of things that can affect your portfolio, could potentially have it lose value due to the changes that are taking place in market conditions. But like we said, they're not the others. There's also personal risk, such as longer lifespan. You might live long. That's a that's a risk. Because right. now you got to find more sources of income, or at least you got to build a bit nest egg that can give you that income. And what I like to tell my friends and clients is that risk isn't a bad thing Mm-mm. if you use it to your your um, advantage, mm-hmm. right? Like I always love to say, 
if there was no risk, there's going to be no reward. Yeah. Once again, you're like a little Yoda. <laughs> I know. Like, but, seriously. you know, no risk, no reward. So that's, risk isn't always a bad thing because mm-hmm. that's how you get to grow your clown. Your as, long, as long as you remember, and this is very important, that past performance is no indicative of future performance. You know, so I just like to throw that in every now and then because I compliance know, loves that. Right. I like it too. Shout right. out to compliance. <laughs> Shout out to our <laughs> compliance. Absolutely. All right. Number six. Uh, I like this because it's got, I mean, I wish you could see this picture, but it's really cool. Is avoid the emotional roller coaster. Ooh. And, and instead, repeat after me. I will be worried. <laughs> I will want to take my money out of the market. My money will lose from time to time the original value. But as long as you keep that money in and you accept that that is just a natural part of investing, then I think you'll be on the road to success. And I actually have some stats to back why you want to avoid the emotional roller coaster. And it's actually from the white paper. So it says emotional decision making can lead to making the wrong decision at the wrong time. Two bad things. Bad decisions. I, bad time. I, I can. That's like one of those funny words because I, I'm going to say like a lot of times. <laughs> yeah, like really a lot of times. OK, so they did a Dalbar study and they found that while the S&P 500 had returned 9.85 percent for the 20 year period ending in 2015, the average investor fared much worse, seeing a return of only 5.19 during the same period. Yeah, so hmm. I, I that I want to highlight that one because I, I love that statistic is that even though all of the mutual funds and the index indices always tell you, oh, the 10-year return looks so great, and the minute you put it on in there, you think, how come that never happens to me? Mm-hmm. That is what that Dalbar study is talking about because yeah. a lot of times your emotions do get the best of you and you... And you don't get that return because you're in at the right at the wrong time and you're out at the wrong time. Yeah, and in this image, it really does look like a roller coaster. So as you know, as it, as you you're on that roller coaster and you start going up and it's doing that, ding, 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 sounds like you know you're biting your nails real loud. That's confidence, you know, and it's greed going, and it's excitement. Going up, it's going up, and then you get to the peak. You get to the peak. You're right about to go over the. Now you're euphoric, right? Because you mm-hmm. know what's to come. But uh oh. Once it starts going down, then you're nervous, then you're defeated. And then when you get to the bottom, you're deep, desperate. And then finally out. it lifts back up to hopeful and then the pattern could repeat itself. So number six, avoid the emotional roller coaster. All right, two more. Number seven, the cost of procrastination, doing nothing. Yeah, this is the worst piece. And it goes back to um, the whole idea of when you get that 401k, it's not do I participate or not. It's get in and just get going, get saving. Yeah, I've got another stat for this one. Wow, they're full of stats now. Okay, so I want to give you a hypothetical situation here. we got two hypothetical investors. we got Sally Starts and Dave Delays. Perfect names for this example, (laughs) right? When Sally turns 50, she starts contributing $25,000 a year to an account that earns a hypothetical 6%. Not bad, Sally. $25,000 a year at 6%. Now, after 10 years, she stops. She stops making payments. She's good. Dave, however, remember, this is Dave Delays, puts off his investing program. And at age 60, so 10 years after Sally, he begins setting aside $25,000 a year into an account that earns, again, the same hypothetical 6%. Though both have contributed equal amounts for 10 years, Sally had the magic of compound interest working for her so that when they both reach the age of 70, Sally's account balance is nearly how many times bigger than Dave DeLay's? I don't know. Twice. Twice as big. Same amount of investing period, 10 years. Mm -hmm. However, she started at 50. He was Dave DeLay's. He lived up to his name, waited 10 years, started doing it. Then 6%. And that's that's quite a difference so imagine you doing this in your 20s and 30s absolutely Mm -hmm. let time be your best friend yeah that would be like what john super early or (laughs) or some other name i love this all right so that was number seven so don't procrastinate and finally last but not least numero ocho di ocho eight delegate 
the details. And this is the uh, shameless plug. Financial professionals can help you create these customized portfolio strategies that you can build around your goals and your time horizon so that you can push through multiple market scenarios and uh, really pursue your long-term financial goals. Yeah, there's a lot that we do in our profession to really understand what's going on and what is important versus what you hear on the news that may not be relevant. And so... Um, working with an advisor really gives you an in on those, um, just, you know, the expertise, uh, somebody who's been there, somebody who's going to react or help you through the emotions that you get when you do this on your own. I couldn't have said that better myself. My God, that was awesome. So those were the eight timeless principles of investing brought to you by your friendly advisors in California, Tech Girl Financial, Kim and Victor. Listen, this white paper is currently available on our website. Like I said early in this podcast at the beginning, go ahead, download it. Now you have it in your fingertips and impress your friends and family and pets with just how smart you are about knowing about investing. Anything else? Any other nuggets? Buy low and sell high. There you go. That's the, uh, that always, <laughs> that never gets old, right? So once again, this is the Tech Girl Financial Podcast. We want to thank you for joining us. Check out the four or five seasons of our podcast with some great material. We're hoping to bring some special guests uh, over the course of this year as we get closer to the end of the year, start looking towards 2022 and the future outlook for what's happening in the world of investing. I know, heads up, it's an even year. And for me, even years are always harder. <laughs> mm, so it's going to be a doozy. Yeah. Well, that'll be a fun ride. Anyway, thank you so much for joining us. As always, if you have any questions, uh, if you have any comments, if you have any special guests you think we should bring on the program, please send us an email or just contact us through our website. You can also find us on all the social networks. We love the Instagrams. We love the Facebooks and the Twitters and the LinkedIn's and the YouTubes and the... I think that's all of them, right? So um, just find us there. And that's where we'll be. All right. So we'll talk to you next time. Thanks for joining us. See ya. Bye. If you have questions, comments, or suggestions for future shows, please send an email to victor at techgirlfinancial.com or join the conversation on Twitter using the hashtag AskTGF. We also encourage you to follow us on the Tech Girl Financial page on Facebook and connect with us on LinkedIn. Securities offered through registered representatives of Cambridge Investment Research, Inc., a broker-dealer member FINRA, SIPC. Investment advisory services offered through Cambridge Investment Research Advisors, a registered investment advisor. Tech Girl Financial and Cambridge Investment Research, Inc. are not affiliated companies. Discussions in the show should not be construed as specific recommendations or investment advice. Always consult with your investment professional before making important investment decisions.